Hey folks, welcome back. We got this 1998 Dodge Ram pickup in here. It's crank and no start. This has a 5.9 Cummins, the uh, 24 valve with the VP44 pump. Now, um, this is going to fall along with uh, two other videos that I have out. Um, one, another pickup being a crank and no start. Uh, the other one was a, a long crank before it eventually starts. And which way to go about troubleshooting these because um, it all has to do with the weight to start light and um, this one here has got a bad ECM and we'll go into you know I'm going to show you the symptoms right quick here and then um, I'm going to go into uh, how I found it and actually um, what you can do with this one here because um, it's kind of it's it's Pretty interesting. I mean, it's something that makes sense, but it's pretty interesting um, because we can get this thing to start and run, um, but it's actually uh, not how you would think. So, anyways, let's uh, go have a look, see at the at the at the symptom, and um, go from there. Okay, so when you got one of these pickups um, with this style deal, and I, I'm 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 not an expert. I just I'm running an independent shop and just started a couple of years ago and running into these things and i had one of them that i troubleshot for for days trying to figure out that long crank before i realized it had a bad ecm that um was causing the the long cranking before it would start um because i was chasing after fuel issues i was chasing after sucking air this that and the other and that's what you could run into if you're not paying attention to uh how it was going, you had the other pickup that was a crank no start, um, you would turn the key on and you'd never see the weight to start light. Well, obviously the first thing I need to do is, is is figure out, you know, do we have all of our inputs and all that kind of stuff to the ECM, went to the fuse box, finally found one fuse that was, that was bad, and boom, that one started up and go. And so basically that's what these videos are for, is to help with that. And so let's turn the key on and try to start this thing. Now you see that wait to start light right there. Immediately just came on and blinked. You know. And we get nothing. We can sit there and crank forever when nothing's going to happen. So, now basically one time they said a long time ago, now this pickup's been sitting around a long time before I got it towed here, that uh, it didn't really ever run that great when it was cold. Um, it would start, but it just would never run that great and I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, you can see the temperature gun right there. And so what we're going to do now, believe it or not, is I am going to take this uh, heat gun. I'm going to go right down here onto the uh, engine ECM, which is mounted. Well, this would normally be up here where those two bolts are on right there. It's mounted right there with that plug. And we're just going to take the temperature gun and we're just going to heat up around it. And I'll show you what happens after that. And I will um, show you and in a little bit later on how and why I found this. Because um, this isn't your typical type of a troubleshooting type of a step. So we're just going to take the heat gun and just put it on here. Just warm this thing up. Okay, we got that shut off there, and we will come in here. Okay, so we got that shut off, and we'll come in here. See that weight start light on, staying on. Okay, if we look at this uh, schematic where we have the uh, actual ECM right here, um, first thing we're going to just talk about briefly is, you know, here's the wait to start warning. So that's why this, that wait to start light is um, critical in troubleshooting your, your crank no start symptom or a, even like we did have that one pickup that uh 
had the the long crank and no start um basically what happens with with that pickup was and there's another i got another video showing it um when you turn the key on sometimes it would take six eight even up to 10 seconds before that wait to start light would come on prior to that that pickup would not that engine would not start uh, but as soon as that wait to start light comes on whether if it took eight seconds or 10 seconds or six seconds or whatnot once it came on boom it started up every single time uh so that's that's why it's critical is because this ecm controls that light into what's going on um you know because you can see that this right here uh goes out of uh terminal 37 i think it's orange and black and what it does is it goes up here and here's your actual weight to start, you know, see it's in the in instrument cluster. And so it's just providing a ground to the light bulb, you know, because this fuse 17 right here has just, just according to this schematic, whether it's all right or not, I mean, it's an aftermarket schematic, who knows? And so basically with that uh, weight to start light blinking like that, it's basically saying, you know, something's going on. Now, I wasn't sure what that meant. Um, I did uh, read in somewhere in all this stuff that if if it blinks like that, um, sometimes it could mean that it's not programmed or doesn't have the right calibration. It's not our issue, I don't think, because this unless it's a used ECM that somebody threw in there and it's not correct or whatever. But I I don't think that's gonna change anything by heating it up with a heat gun so i don't think that's our issue um the other thing i wanted to you know uh what should come on um for a brief period of time most of the time when you click it you know is this fuel transfer pump and it can come on for like maybe a second or two you know just to kind of it just comes on basically but you've got the your fuel transfer pump here that's a, your little lift pump uh it's kind of back of the um behind the fuel bowl a little bit i mean it's a little tiny thing a lot of a lot of guys re redo these and put you know those high flow fast pumps and all that kind of stuff but this is the the actual uh fuel transfer pump here and you see it's just a two wire thing and it it comes out here and it goes into the splice and then it goes over here and it grounds right there so this side is actually being uh provided uh 12 volts positive and it's coming out and it's going right in here and it's going in here to a splice and it's going into terminal 35 which is you got your transfer pump power uh the splice also brings it in here to terminal 16 which is also transfer pump power why it has two i don't know could be the it, it just needs to for the capacity i don't know we don't need to worry about that um that's one thing i was not getting so we should have that power coming out of there because this ecm does control that pump i think it actually turns it on and off depending on uh to, to maintain i don't know to maintain the fuel i don't i really don't think so but it does control it obviously um don't worry about this five volt supply that was something else i was doing uh with this because i was checking these uh sensors and whatnot and because i had other wiring issues and stuff like that that i could could see and that was totally unrelated to this particular problem it's just how rough that pickup is it had a lot going on um so yeah that's what why these are traced out but that's different um so anyways yeah um i think that's i didn't have that input so i knew that that wasn't coming out of and i think i also looked on here uh i think it's this wire no, that's data link. Uh, could be this wire. That's your data link plus. One of these wires, you know, is like a 12 volt positive power, something like that for the fuel injection. I'm not sure. All I know is I did not have any power coming out of this transfer pump or for this transfer pump out of this ECM. So that's how I kind of knew the ECM was, was, you know, not functioning correctly. Um, because, you know, regardless of what needs to turn this pump on, 
you know, if you're not going to get this, it's still not going to work. Um, so I pretty much stopped there, but I thought I remember, I think I looked at one of these wires as, as far as, um, you know, checking to see if, if, uh, that's a ground. Anyways, won't worry about that right now. Just get, you're going to have to get, get, get this schematic if you're, um, this is from Mitchell. Um, anyways, uh, so back to how did I figure this deal out as far as this ECM being able to heat up? Well, that first video that I made with that, um, it's kind of a dark green colored pickup. It was a 99. Um, I actually, it's a customer of mine, but I actually know them really well. And I thought maybe because that pickup also has, you know, an ECM problem because you turn the key on, like I said, you know, the wait to start light warning takes a long time for it to come on. And that in turn does not turn on the fuel transfer pump. And it also doesn't, you know, turn on this injection pump. And I mean, you know, so be, basically this thing just sits there and cranks till the wait to start light comes on and then boom, it starts fires right up. So I thought, well, what if I got that pickup in here? Um, because, when the time it left, it was it was kind of like, well, you know, we can replace the ECM. That's probably going to fix that problem, or you can just run it right now. And it's not something that they use all the time, I guess. So um, they opted just, well, let's just wait, and you know, if it fails, it fails, and we'll know exactly what it is. But we pretty much narrowed it down to the ECM. But I was like, well, if, if I call them and see if I can get that pickup in here, and maybe do some more a little bit more testing on that one and then uh just swap that ecm into the other engine now that's not typically i pretty much was was already con confident enough to make the call on the ecm it was just an option that i had that uh i could do and just swap that ecm over and sure enough you know that's because i never had that the the other pickup the one the white one we were just looking at never had it running at all until i put the ECM from the other pickup in there. And I actually noticed that the wait start light did the exact same thing in the white pickup as it did in the original pickup that it belongs in. And so, you know, so I ran it and, you know, we, I actually even, uh, bolted it to the side of the block and I took it for a drive, you know, just testing, you know, well, that's, oh, that's, you know, that's definitely confirmed. That's what we got to do. We got to get a new, uh, ECM for the white pickup, the 98. And so I removed the ECM from the green pickup uh, or from the white pickup, put the ECM back in the green pickup, um, the 99, because I needed to get it back to its original, how it was before. And then I um, was like, all right, I'm going to go just throw the ECM back in into this pickup and just, you know, confirm that we got the same symptom. Uh, it started up and ran and actually when you turn the key on the wait start light would immediately come on like they're supposed to and it fired right up. I mean, matter of fact, you do barely didn't even have to wait. I mean, you turn the key and I, and boom, it would go, took it out and drove it and all this on that like, son of a gun. What is going on now? Now I'm thinking, did I disturb any wires and all like that? Because basically when I went through everything, I had always checked what, inputs to the ECM as far as power goes, whether it's hot all the time power or switched B plus power coming into here and all the grounds. And so I knew this ECM in that white pickup had everything it was supposed to have, even when the, the symptom was there and it wouldn't start. So it, it baffled me for a little bit. And then I was like, all of a sudden I thought about it a couple of hours. Oh no, wait, I, I came back the next morning and went to start that pickup. It just been sitting in the shop here and I probably keep the shop here. I mean, the heater probably set at probably 50 degrees or something like that. When I'm not here, I turn it down. And so I came in here and sure enough, it won't start. And I was like, son of a gun, you know? And then I went back and made sure that it had all of its inputs again, like it's supposed to. Um, it obviously had all the inputs and everything in it while it was running because it was running. Um, you know, when you don't have a symptom anymore, you don't know what to chase after. But now that I have my symptom back, it's like, okay, let's figure this out. Well, it'll have the issue with no power coming in here for the lift pump and this, that, and the other had all the inputs, the switched inputs, the B plus inputs, the grounds, all that stuff was there. And 
I actually, you know, by that, by then I was confident enough. So I, okay, I'm just going to kind of move some wires around that didn't make any change. And I'm like, what is the, it really baffled me. The fact that, you know, I stuck that ECM, the original ECM back in the white pickup, this pickup, the one we're talking about in this video. Um, and, and it worked. I, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, you know, the only thing different was that engine was warmed up when I put that, the original ECM back in there. And that's where I came up with, okay, I'm going to, it's kind of a shot in the dark. I'm going to just take my heat gun and I'm just going to heat that ECM and sure as shit, it, uh, it fired right up. And then it was like, okay. So I let it parked it outside, let it cool off during the day. Uh, went back to it, turned the key on. We had a blinking weight start light, no crank or crank, no start. And sure enough, get the heat gun on it. And I've done that probably uh, four additional times uh, since the very first time I did it just to confirm that that's what it is. So there's something in the ECM here that, uh, and I don't know the inner workings of it, no, don't, nor do I have a schematic on how it works and the, you know all the resistors and transistors and this, that, and the other that it has to work through. At some point, it does not make a connection um, until it's it's heated up externally like it's sitting in a running engine which would also kind of make sense of why maybe this thing ran kind of poorly before it all of a sudden just all of a sudden quit running altogether um is, is until the thing warmed up and i've had things i've had it, it opposite um i've actually had uh vp44 pumps go bad um and where they work real good until they get warmed up and then maybe you have a crank no start and then let it sit there and cool. And then all of a sudden uh, it'll crank and start because this uh, circuit board that comes into here on your fuel injection pump on the VP44 pump, uh, when it gets hot, that's usually what happens. They don't flow. Sometimes they don't flow enough fuel and they just get hot. And then the, the connections aren't very good. And I've also had ones where, you know, they always started, but they just ran like crap when they got warmed up. And then you can sit there and you can, you can have the engine just be rawr, 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 back and forth, you know, just, is just running like crap and run some cold water on top of the, uh, VP44 pump where this circuit board is at and all of a sudden it cures it and has it running running great until it gets warmed back up again. Cool it off with the water, boom, it runs great. Got to replace the VP44 pump. So that's pretty much kind of my thought process and that's how exactly this happened uh, with this ECM because it was kind of interesting find, you know. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert on, on these... Uh, these Cummins vintage or whatever. Um, but I am pretty, pretty decent with electric because I've, I've, that's all I've ever done. My whole career is, is electrical is what I'm, what I'm the most strong about. Um, and that's why I think I've gotten these particular problems where it's not been anything mechanical. It's not been a bad fuel supply or nothing like that. As far as this being the third, third pickup that has had something to do with, uh, the wait start warning light not coming, you know, on or doing correctly. And that's pretty much what, you know, has caused the crank no start on two of them. And then the really long crank where it finally starts on the third one, which was actually the first one I ever had in. Um, like I said, I, I, I troubleshot that one for days. Um, that being kind of the first one I ever really worked on with, with, uh, I had a few others, like I've talked about with, uh, you know, that everything was fine with the ECM and, and behaving that way. Um, but, uh, with the cold water and all that kind of stuff, I had, I had diagnosed a few bad, uh, VP 44 pumps that way, but this is, the, these are the three that have to do with the ECM other than the second one, which was you turn the key and nothing came on. I don't remember what fuse that is. It's in that video. I'll link both of those videos, uh, to this one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what these videos are about is, um, you know, paying attention to that weight start light as your first go to with your crank and no start. Um, and even your long crank and start or whatever, um, can work too, because that's eventually when I figured out that that's what it was doing. Um, cause you'll, you'll, I'll talk about it in that video. Cause I didn't, I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't really think that, you know, um, the weight start light needed to come on when it's, you know, 70 degrees in the shop or whatever. I didn't, you know, didn't pay attention, but it does. It has to, when you, these things you have to turn the key on, that light needs to come right on. And as soon as it comes on, 
uh, depending on the temperature outside, if it's, if it's warm enough, boom, you can hit the key and, and go. So anyways, hopefully this will help help out also with that you know other than that it's just another series of videos and just another uh series of things that just happened uh here during my shop career and thought i'd just share it with you so anyways thanks for watching